All right, we're talking about field charging. If you do have the luxury of having a blocked out time and you have made plans purposefully to go out to an event with friends or whatever, to fly airplanes or helicopters, RC cars, drones, whatever, and need to charge in the field, then I do recommend doing what everyone else does and just charge a big pack and then use this as your source for whatever charger you're using in the field. However, if you're looking to be more spontaneous, meaning your plans are always canceled or made up on the spot, and you don't always have the luxury of pre-charging this at home before you make the decision to go out, and you don't wanna have to discharge this if your plans don't pan out and you're not able to use it, then you may wanna use a battery bank because a battery bank is smaller, not that much smaller, but it is smaller, and it's something that'll be a little bit safer, and you also may already have it on you in your everyday carry bag or a backpack or whatever, and you don't have to have a dedicated pack that you're purposely charging to go out on the outing. So using a battery bank does have its benefits. Uh, of course, it has limitations. And again, if you have your day planned out, then do what people normally do and just charge a big pack and then use this to charge smaller packs in the field. But again, you the battery bank is great for spontaneous outings for whatever RC hobby you're involved in. I hate bait videos just as much as you guys do. So I'm gonna tell you upfront that this does not work for 1S batteries, nor 4S or higher batteries. Charging with a battery bank will only work for 2 and 3S batteries. So if that does fit you, then continue watching because this is a really good way to do it. If it doesn't, then just swipe me out and go to the next video. Also, I haven't had the challenge of having to carry a LiPo battery on an airplane or anything like that, but a battery bank is gonna be a lot more stealthy. Again, it's smaller in physical size, but stealthy meaning no one really thinks twice about it who isn't in the hobby. Whereas if you're carrying around something like this, People may be a little bit intimidated or questioning why you have that or what it's for. For my home charger, I'm going to leave this Hota D6 Duo Pro at home. It normally sits in my living room and I just plug it straight into the wall and it is a dual channel charger and it's fairly bulky. I know you can buy smaller chargers that you can use in the field, but we're going to leave this at home and we're going to charge in the field using a PD battery bank. And I'll talk more about that in a bit. The reason we can't charge four, five, and six cell batteries has nothing to do with the limitations of this charger itself. It has to do with the limitations of the power source that's going in to operate this. So if we're going to use this with a LiPo battery, you can use a LiPo battery anywhere from 2 to 6S, and it would operate this. And you can charge another battery that's 2 to 6S. So that's not a problem. Where the limitation is for the discussion of the scope of this video is that we are charging using a battery bank and the battery bank has a limited output. Okay. So this PD power bank is going to be limited at 12 volts as will most, or I think all of them. So this requires 10 volts. This can provide 12 volts. So 12 volts is going to be a, basically a 3S battery or less. It's not going to be 4S or higher. So the limitation again is this going into this. If you are planning a field charge using a giant LiPo battery, you can do pretty much anything you would normally do with any other charger. So this isn't incapable of that. It's just the limitation, again, comes from the battery bank. So we're going to look at the battery bank at the specs. You're going to make sure that you get a battery bank that has PD-capable charging. Okay, PD stands for power delivery, and that's not necessarily new technology, but it's something that people don't normally discuss. They just go on Amazon and they buy a battery bank, but you're gonna, one, you're gonna want one that has PD because that will have the voltage that we need. So we're gonna look at the specs here and you can get any you know battery bank that you want, but this happens to be a 10,000 milliamp hour one, which has usable about 6,200 milliamp hours. And we look here at the PD output and at 12 volts, we can use up to 1.5 amps. Okay, 12 volts, which is basically a 3S battery at 1.5 amps. So if you're going to charge a battery that is, say, 2,000 milliamp hours, you will not be able to charge at 2 amps because this maxes out at 1.5. So you can still charge a 3S battery that has high milliamp hours. It's just that you're not going to be able to charge it at 1C. You'll be charging at less than 1C. So this is going to be your cap. So normally when you're punching in to your charger at home, we're not going to be able to go higher than 1.5 amps. You might ask yourself, what happens if the 
the battery bank you have is not PD. What happens is if it's not PD, the voltage that comes out of this is limited to five volts, which is not nearly enough for the requirement of this, which is 10 volts. So you really do need a PD capable one, which again is 12 volts and that's what you're gonna need for the power bank. So when you're looking for specs and you're looking at any power bank that you may already have, you're gonna want one that has PD capability because it'll charge at the required voltage that we need for the charger that we're using. This is the setup for plugging everything into the charger. We're gonna be plugging the power brick in here in a moment, but I just kind of wanted to show you this. For those of you that may be new, the balance lead for some chargers and some companies, they will go in this direction on the far left of the balance port. And on other chargers, it's gonna be this way and you're gonna start on the right. So you're just gonna kind of look at the shape of the port. And when you see these little notches here, then you know those notches match these things. So they're gonna go upside down and then we go on the left side here. So it's important that we're gonna plug in the balance lead. So we're gonna plug everything in just like this. Power comes to here, power bank into the charger and electricity flows through here into the battery. So the reason I plug this in first is because, and I don't know if it's a fault or feature of this particular battery bank, but when I plug this in, and if I don't plug the rest of it in quick enough, what happens is the PD capability goes away and it charges at standard speed or standard voltage, which is not gonna be high enough to operate this. So what I do is I plug everything in first and then I'm gonna plug this into the USB-C, USB-C to USB-C. And after that, you're gonna see this lightning symbol. And right when you see lightning symbol, it means that it is on PD charge mode. And you'll saw that I couldn't explain it fast enough, so I had to press this button while I was talking. And this button charges the battery and it starts right away. So this is a screenshot of the app. It's called ISD Go. Ironically, not ISDT go, the T is absent. In the top left corner in the orange, you're gonna see the milliamp hours that are being added to the battery. To the right of it, you'll see 0 0.4 amps, and that's the charge rate or the current. The bottom left corner, you'll see where it says 12 point something. That's the number of volts that's going into the charger, which is required. Here's the parameters, we're gonna go ahead and click on that stop button, and the menu will pop up, and we're gonna to go to battery voltage, where that can be adjusted to whatever level you'd like. The next is gonna be battery current, and that does range from 0.1 to five amps. We're gonna go and change this to one amp for this larger battery. And during the time that I did this, it paused and the battery bank is now charging at non-PD levels, which is 5.2 and the reason for this error. I am happy to report though that if you do lose connection to Bluetooth or your phone shuts down altogether, it does not interrupt the charging. It only interrupts your ability to monitor. So again, there is an issue with my particular power bank. As I was kind of messing with the parameters on the app, I stopped it for a moment and during that pause, the PD capability disappeared. So there's no lightning bolt, it is not charging on PD, which means there's not enough voltage to charge this. It's enough to run it and you could see the cell count, but that doesn't do us any good. We're gonna need to actually charge this. So when that happens, I do have to unplug this, wait a moment, and then I plug it back in. And then when the lightning bolt comes back, then I'm gonna press that button. And I may have to do this a few times. Hopefully when you buy your battery bank, it's gonna be charging PD speeds all the time and not have this weird pause thing. I'm in the middle of discussions with iNew to figure out why this is, but in the meantime, right when the lightning bolt comes, I press the button and we start going. Once the button is pressed and the charging initiates, it does not get interrupted. The only time it gets interrupted from PD to standard on my particular battery bank is if I'm manually changing the parameters. The reason why this charging setup is exciting is because many of us who are flying tiny whoops on 2S or driving micro crawlers are using batteries very low milliamp hours, which means we can't be charging at too high of an amperage. A lot of the USB stick chargers that come free with various quads or micro crawlers charge at one amp, which may be two or three C, 
much higher than we would want to safely be charging. So this charger charges at a minimum or can be a minimum of 0.1 amps. You'd be hard pressed to find a portable charger that is legitimate and hobby grade that can charge that low. Most of the Toolkit RC and even the ISDT chargers will be charging at one amp minimum. So this is sort of a, I don't want to say a needle in a haystack, but it's, it's something that's been overlooked, I think, because this charger came out two years ago and it never really got any traction. But seeing its application here is exciting because it's literally the only one I was able to find. All right, the weather's good, so we thought we'd come out to Pacifica here in California. We're gonna talk a little bit about why the ISDT H605 has been so played down. So why is the ISDT H605 so unpopular? And I think a lot of it has to do with because it doesn't have a screen. And with a charger that you're spending 30 bucks on that doesn't have a screen, people are a little bit underwhelmed and I don't think they give it a chance. But for what it is, there's actually advantages of not having a screen. I mean, people dismiss it a little bit too quickly. And by not having a screen, what happens is you can actually check your battery voltage remotely. So say you're playing with your Tiny Whoop or your RC car at a distance and it crashes and you're going out there to fetch it. At that moment, you could check the voltage of batteries that may be charging where all your gear is being stationed. And so that may not be a big thing or even a requirement, but the fact that that is a feature is kind of nice. You don't have to constantly go back and forth and check on your batteries and all that. You can actually check the status on your phone on the fly. Another thing is when you have your batteries, such as I was doing, charging in the car, then it's on the seat or maybe in a bag. And rather than having to look through or look down or look back at the battery, you just simply look at the phone, which your phone is probably on a mounting bracket or something on your car on the dashboard or near the fence anyway. So to have that available to you remotely is actually a big advantage for that. Okay, let's talk about the fact that the charger only has one button. So I know some of you may be fearing that one button may be too simple. Like there is such thing as too simple and it makes it kind of difficult. But the idea is that you can set your parameters ahead of time and literally just click the button and start charging. And for the next battery, you unplug it, plug in the new battery, and you press that exact same button, and you don't have to deal with all the parameters. So if you're charging back-to-back -back batteries that have the same specs and same cell count and amperage and all that, then it's actually very easy, very simple, and you don't really have to think much about it. Pricing of all this gear, $30 plus shipping plus tax. Toolkit RC, SC100, eight to $11, depending on whether you get it from AliExpress or some sort of online retailer. I happen to get it from Amazon, and I got this from Newbie Drone, who sells quads. The battery bank, this particular one, I've seen as cheap as $14 or $16, and as expensive as $25. Currently, it's from Amazon for $20. I don't necessarily recommend this one because of the whole issue of sometimes, or initially when you plug it in, it uses PD, but then if you don't plug it into any device right away, then the PD functionality turns off by itself and you gotta re-plug it in. I don't know if that's something that all PD chargers these days do as a feature to just not charge at too high voltage or if it's something specific to iNU. But this is the one I use and it's worked out really well. The 10,000 milliamp hour is actually very good for this particular physical size. If you're looking for something smaller, then you can go for something that's 5,000 milliamp hour or 7,000, but 10,000 seems to be a good size, physical size for me and supplies all the power I need. I can charge tiny move batteries that are 350 milliamp hours or the micro crawler battery is about 18 times with a fully charged pack. It's a little windy out there, so we're back in the car. <laughs> On a personal note about how this project came to be, it's that I am a new owner of an Axial SCX24, which is a micro crawler, 24 scale micro crawler, very, very small with very small batteries. And the issue with that, and there's actually just a new post today on Facebook, how someone's battery was swelling up and they explode on a regular basis. So we see this all the time and there's nothing wrong with the battery, I don't think. And there's nothing wrong with the charger, I don't think. But pairing them together where amperage is running to these batteries at too high of an amperage, 
Um, specifically, it's 0.8 amps for a 350 milliamp hour battery. So that's over 2C. And a lot of the other stuff out there is minimum is one amp, which is even higher or way too high. So this project was a way to find a solution where we can charge in the field spontaneously batteries at a very slow amperage or safe rate. And that's how I came up with this. So the other things I considered were eBay, USB chargers, and those the specifications are a little bit sketchy and we're not sure how real those are. And the quality of those are questionable. The reliability is questionable. They're not named brands or branded at all. The other product I was looking at was a Toolkit RC M4 Pocket. It had adapters built into it. It's small form factor too. It has a screen that comes with it and it's also around the same price of $30. But the reason I did not go with that is the most critical spec that I needed for my particular application and for those of you that have smaller milliamp hour rated batteries. And that's that the M4 Pocket, the lowest amperage is one amp, which is already higher than some of our Whoop and micro crawler batteries. So that off the bat was already off the table, but I did consider that uh, seeing the other specs and it was really attractive and all those features. So if you're if you're not looking to necessarily charge at low amperage, then you may want to take a look at that. I don't have it personally, so I can't give you my personal opinion and usage of it, but the ISDT H605 Air that I've been talking about is definitely working <laughs> and is great for my application of being able to charge spontaneously and not having to worry about a source battery to discharge later at home or be disappointed that it never even got to use or having to prepare for an outing by charging that in the first place. And everything comes in a small package and it's been working really well. So hopefully some of you may fall into that category and find this useful. Um, we'll take care. We'll see you next time. Bye.